There's been a lot of attention on the security transition in Afghanistan and the drawdown of NATO uh, and U.S. forces. Um, there's been some focus on the economic transition in Afghanistan, but the most important transition of all, I think, for the future peace and stability in Afghanistan is the political transition. It's critically important that out of 2000, after 2014, there is a legitimate government, and the only way we can get that is through a credible election. Because you need that legitimate government to be able to keep the, the armed forces unified. If we'd have no legitimate government, they could actually divide along ethnic and factional lines and return to civil war. But also to keep economic resources flowing to Afghanistan, it's critically important to have a successful election. Because if there's no legitimate government, that would be a great excuse for Western donors to cut off their assistance to Afghanistan. And I think it's important to remember when the Soviets left Afghanistan, um, the Najibullah regime that they were, they were backing did not collapse when the troops left. Uh, they collapsed when the economic subsidies from Moscow ended. So it's very important that aid can, flows continue to Afghanistan, and I think that can only be assured if there's a, a successful election leading to a legitimate government. Um, and you know, I think there's going to be a lot of work to do up until the end of the transition period of 2014. A political, a, a particularly worrying trend right now is the increasing incidence of green on blue attacks, where you have the Afghan forces, either infiltrators or actual uh, uh, NSF forces, attacking NATO forces and killing them. And that's certainly breaking down the important trust relationship you need in a training mission. So I think that's been a big drawback to the, the transition plan. But nevertheless, it's continuing. There's a lot of effort still ongoing to make the uh, Afghan National Security Forces ready for the end of the transition in 2014. As the Institute of Peace, our main mission is peace and stability in Afghanistan. And certainly, I've been working in Afghanistan off and on since the mid-1980s, and we don't have a good track record of getting peace. Um, but the U.S. Institute of Peace has been working there for about 10 years now, and a lot of the focus was on the rule of law sector, and in particular, trying to understand better the informal justice sector, traditional dispute resolution mechanisms, because my own view is that one of the big things fueling the insurgency in Afghanistan is the perceptions of injustice, immunity, uh, I mean, impunity of some of the warlords who have committed atrocities in the past, um, and lack of confidence in the basic rule of law in the country. And I think that's one of the areas we've really prioritized moving forward uh, in the last 10 years. But quite frankly, right now, our top priority is to get more international community attention on the presidential elections in 2014 because, we, again, we feel that for the future peace and stability in Afghanistan right now, the most urgent need is for there to be some form of legitimate government uh, after, at the end of this transition period. I think you have to be optimistic uh, to stay in this business or else there's really no point. I think if you feel it's all going to fail and implode, uh, you know, then yeah, we might as well give up now. And I certainly don't think we should because I think it's actually the fear of returning back to the situation in the 1990s where Afghans suffered so tremendously, but also the re neighbors of Afghanistan suffered tremendously from refugee in inflows. That to me is what gives me hope, is that everyone loses if Afghanistan falls apart again. The international community loses, NATO member states, the U.S., but m neighboring countries, but most importantly, Afghans lose. So I'm actually confident that what, whether, I mean, it's easy to paint a gloomy picture, but I think in the end, there will be a willingness to step back from the brink, and Afghans are actually pretty good at deal making, and, and so I'm, I'm actually cautiously optimistic that we won't return back to civil war uh, after the transition in 2014.